بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity to come again to visit our brothers here in Islam Bradford we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this city inshallah a successful one that will increase us in our knowledge and our iman. Alhamdulillah, last time we were here, we talked about some, the similar topic, which was about purification of the soul. But today we're going to talk in specific, in detail, inshallah, about one particular topic about purification of the soul and how to revive our soul, inshallah ta'ala. But first of all, I have a question for all of you. I want to talk money. Tonight, I want to talk business. It's okay? We can talk about business. Who here doesn't like money? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Sister said she doesn't like money in the, in the sister side. Huh? She said, no, we don't like money. Who doesn't? Everybody likes money? We're agreed on money? Money is honey, right? It, it, it's, it's honey, right? Everybody loves money. It's sweet. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created this soul, who knows this soul, what did he say about us and money? You have this big love for money. It's the, the nafs of the human being. He loves it. And verily he is for the love of al-khayr. And khayr means here what? Money. Doesn't mean good deeds. Means this. That he loves the khayr. He's very shadeed. He loves it so much. It's something natural. But what we're supposed to do as Muslims is to get this out of our soul. Because we're stingy. We don't like to give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's human nature as well. Whoever stays away from the stinginess of himself, of his soul, then these are the successful ones. So I'm going to give you guys a proposition tonight. If somebody were to come to you, Brother Masood were to come to you and say, give me 1,000 pounds and I'll give you a guarantee. Halal, halal business here. A guarantee you'll get like 7,000 profit or 70,000 or 700,000, 7 million, something like that. It's going to be in the seven, somewhere big. It's a guarantee. Halal. Who wouldn't take the business proposition? Guarantee profit. Everybody would take it, right? Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah, we're still on the same page. I have a proposition for you. And I can bring you a guarantee. All of us like guarantee. Five-year guarantee, five-year warranty. I have a guarantee for you, inshallah. That, inshallah ta'ala, you will be successful. You will have the good provision of this life, inshallah, in the next. You will have your sins forgiven for you. You have your sins, all your bad deeds, turned into good deeds. This is four things now I've, I've guaranteed, inshallah. And Allah will love you. And Allah will be happy with you. And you enter into the Jannah. Seven things. I can give you a guarantee here tonight. Is anybody not interested in the guarantee? It's guaranteed. Mudmun. Stamped. But it's not guaranteed to, from me. Guaranteed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing can get you all of these seven. What is that one thing? Who knows what it is? I think. One thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, commands us, And make toba to Allah, all of you. Oh, you believers, perhaps that you will be successful. Success. If you want to be successful, you'll be successful through the tawbah, through repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these things I mentioned right now, bi idnillah, a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will have all of these if you repent to Him. You want to be successful in this life and the next. Everybody, correct or not? Make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repent to Allah if you want to be successful. 
You want to have your bad deeds forgiven for you. All your mistakes forgiven for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls you in the name of Iman. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Asa rabbukum ayyu kafir ankum sayyatikum wa yudkhilukum jannatin tajri min tahti ala naar. Subhanallah. O oh, you who believe, Allah calls you in the name of Iman. Make a tawbah to Allah, a repentance to Allah that is nusuh. What is the tawbah that's nusuh? What is the meaning of it? Who knows it? You guys aren't really good at answering questions in Bradford, by the way. I remember this from last time, too. Everybody, mashallah, listens very well, but nobody moves. Everybody, <laughs> mashallah. Huh? What? Huh? What is the tawbah nusuh? You never heard it before? Umar al Khattab will teach you what it is, inshallah. He told us, radiallahu an, that it's the tawbah where you never go back to the sin. Where you have a certain sin that you repent from it and that you never return. Because a lot of times we're going to repent, we're going to fall back into it. But the one that you never return to, that is the tawbah, that is nusuh. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do. And from the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy, because Allah is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Kareem, Al-Mannan, Al-Wadud, Al-Ghafoor, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He tells us the benefits we get in return. To encourage us to strive to make tawbah. It's His right upon us. He is our creator. He could have told us, Tawbu in Allahi jami'an. Make tawbah, all of you, to Allah. And that's enough. He commanded us, and you have to do it. Because He's your creator, He owns you. And He told you, you must make repentance. You must make tawbah. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging you to strive and he's telling you what you're going to get in return. In this verse now, he said, those who make the tawbah nasuh, what do you get? Asa rabbukum, perhaps your Lord will forgive you of your sins and enter you into Jannah, which with beneath the river is flowing. Enter you into the paradise. All for making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Would you like to have the good provision of this life? The good of this life and the next? SubhanAllah, the, the problem, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we don't reflect on the Quran. How many of us read the Quran in one month? And if we do, MashaAllah, Allah Akbar, MashaAllah, Asid min Asudillah, MashaAllah, from the lines of Allah. This is big, it's me, man, I do it, man. Once a month, MashaAllah. That's what we're supposed to be doing, right? All of us know this. We're supposed to read the Quran at least once a month. Minimum. The early Muslims, how much did they used to read the Quran? How many Jews of the day? Uh. Woo, 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 woo. Busted. Uh, you know what you did wrong? We have the Sunnah police here. Be careful, man. Ah, with the right hand, inshallah. Huh? The Sunnah police. We have to pay attention. The Sunnah is drink with the right hand. Get the barakah, get blessings in it. It's probably the same to drink with the right hand, don't drink with the left hand. Because who drinks with the left hand? <coughs> Shaitan, alhamdulillah. He'll never forget after this, inshallah. Always drink with the right hand, inshallah. Uh, where were we? What were we saying? Y'all forgot? All of you forgot what I said last? <laughs> ah, the Quran. How, the, the early Muslims, how much did they used to read the Quran? Huh? Some in three days, but the, the majority of them. About seven days. How many Jews do they read a day? Five Jews a day. Five a day. So they will finish in a week or four and a half, something like that. They'll read in that about five a day or a little bit less, and they would finish either in six days or seven days. So now we just say read one Jesus. But the problem is, I want to call all the Muslims. I'm, I'm, when I'm traveling around the world, I sit with my brother and I say, look, let's focus on something else in the time we live in, which is the importance of reflecting on the Quran. Let's just reflect. Not focus, because sometimes people get caught up in this, like, I have to finish once a month. And it's a great thing, no doubt about that. And we should be doing it. But if we just read the turbo qira'ah, and we, no, no barakah, no understanding, what's the benefit? What do we benefit from it? You, you, you get some, some you know, benefit, I'm not saying there's none. But it's not the true benefit. When you sit there and reflect on the meanings, you start to learn the words. You start to learn the words of the Quran, you reflect on its meanings. You go back to the translation. I met one convert, <coughs> mashallah, Persistent, every day. Learn how to read the Quran in Arabic. Understands the Arabic words pretty good now, mashallah. Just two rubas every day. Two rubas in Arabic and in the, in the mother tongue. 
and reflect on the meanings. Must consist in every day, mashallah. Reflect on the meanings of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, once again, think about this when you reflect on this ayah. And make istighfar. <coughs> repent to your Lord, and then repent to your Lord. Make istighfar, say astaghfirullah. Seek Allah's forgiveness, and then repent to Him. It's a command. But then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you? يُمَتِّعُكُمْ مَتَاعًا حَسَنًا He will give you the good life. A guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you repent to Him, you're going to have a good life. It's a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that mata' al hasan this good life, it can be when it comes to the money. Money is honey, don't get me wrong. All of us love money. It can be money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah, blessings in your risk and your provision inshallah ta'ala. Now what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the person who has taqwa? Huh? What does he do for him? يَجْعَلَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Whoever fears Allah, Allah will make for him a way out of the difficulties and he will provide for him in ways that he never knew was possible. Allah Akbar. These are guarantees, promises from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you fear Allah, you strive for Allah, you repent to Allah, you work for Allah, you live for Allah. And it could be even better than the money. Is there something better than the money in, the, in this world? What's better than money? Huh? It's not the, the beautiful woman? Huh? Because what happens? We, come, we, we, get, we, get, we get this iman rush when we come in the masjid, mashallah. <coughs> what, is, what is more about money or, or, or honey? What's better? Or honey and honey? There's nothing like the iman. The belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing like it. I was telling the brother before we started, I gave a lecture recently in Sudan, one of my new lectures. It's called The Ultimate High. We had, we had like weed heads coming to the lecture and everything. Like, they're like, oh, what's this, man? You know, they're, they're like this. They're coming, yeah? Let's get high, man. So I said, I'm going to give you guys the ultimate high today. <coughs> Better than any high you can think about. And we talked about Islam and how we get high in Islam. The high of Iman. The best high you can think about. The best Iman rush. You're not going to find anything like that. No drug on the planet can get you there. It's the real, the real good feeling inside. Nothing can make you feel like this. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us very clearly in the Quran, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَالَ لَفِي نَعِيمٌ وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ لَفِي جَحِيمٌ That the doers of good, they're in na'im, pleasure. And the doers of evil, they're in jahim, they're in living hell. They're in hell. And pay attention to the meaning of this verse because it's not just in the hereafter. Also in this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we reflect. He sends us sign after sign after sign for us to reflect. These so-called happy people, these so-called successful people who are the movie stars, the rappers, and the magicians who claim to be happy, who have all the fame, all the money, all the beauty, but they don't find happiness. What do they turn to for a way out? What do they turn to? Drugs. Drugs, alcohol, depression. And excuse me for using a few names here. I just want to make the point clear to all of us. The king of pop. Who's the king of pop? No, the boy knows. He goes, so brother's like, Astaghfirullah, we don't know who he is, man. Astaghfirullah, akhi, you know? Everybody knows who the king of pop is, man. Even you with your big beard, mashallah, you know who Michael Jackson, the king of pop. The poor guy, man. How, how did he die? Huh? Oh, we don't know that either, Sheikh. Stop for Allah. We don't watch the news. Come on. Yeah, overdose. He died overdose. Prescription drugs. It wasn't cocaine, it wasn't like this. No. Prescription drugs. The poor guy couldn't sleep at night. He's got elephants and giraffes running around his, his, his place. They took it from him later because the, the, he couldn't pay off the bills. Nonetheless, this guy's making millions and spending millions and living in weird things and caves and all this crazy stuff. And he can't sleep. He cannot sleep. Imagine that. A person who has all of this khair, all this, and he can't sleep. The blessing of being able to put your head down at night. And how many of us have trouble going to sleep at night? Alhamdulillah. 
Maybe you think about your money or something. Yeah. But wallahi, alhamdulillah, if, if you with your iman, you'll never have trouble sleeping, inshallah. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going to sleep on the sunnah as the Prophet told you to. Even people come and say, we have nightmares. Wallahi, ever since I became Muslim, the only time I ever had a nightmare was when I didn't follow the advice of the Prophet when I sleep. More than 20 years right now. What the Prophet tell us to do before we go to bed at night? To read what? Ayatul Kursi and what else? The three quls. Guarantee from the Prophet that you won't, shaitan won't come to you at night. Wallahi al I'll tell you right here, right now. Every time I say it, never have a problem at night. Only if I forget to say it. Shaitan gets me sometimes. Sometimes. No. Alhamdulillah. Not a lot. Alhamdulillah. But every now and then he'll come if I forget. Subhanallah. We don't reflect on, on the meanings of the Quran and the Sunnah. This pleasure that we find through doing the good deeds, through striving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see the living hell that these people are in. The poor guy can't sleep. He goes to his doctor and he begs him. He says, please, doctor. He's taking the Valium, huh? Valium and all these other pills to sleep at night. He says, I still can't sleep. Just give me one more, two more pills. The poor doctor felt sorry for the guy. He looks funny, he looks weird already, you know, and he's going, he's going through hell. Poor guy, look at him, you know? Might try to make himself white, he's still not happy, huh? He said, let me give him, you know, another pill or two. Took the guy out, man, killed him, died. After him comes the Queen of Pop. Who's the Queen of Pop? Hmm? No, she's dead. She's still alive. No, it's not his wife. Could have been. So, this guy could be a fiqh. He could have some fiqh in the future, inshallah. May Allah bless him. Grant him the fiqh and understand the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah. That's very good, inshallah. Ah, very good. Because last night when we were in Newcastle, they said, Amy Winehouse. I said, that's your queen. That's the UK queen. That's not the, that's not, that's not the American pop queen. But even her, look at her. The poor girl. She was, she was in trouble, man. Even before she died, you know, people weren't shocked when she died. Because she was living, you could see the hell she was living in. The, 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 poor, the poor individual. And overdosed. Whitney Houston, all the fame, all the beauty, all of this, all of that. Cocaine drops into the bathtub with the, and drowns herself. It's like that. Living hell. I'm going to give you an example of another Hollywood actor. Which is Brother Khalid. Which is Robin Williams. Huh? You all know Robin Williams? The famous actor. One of the top in Hollywood history, honestly. This guy's been acting since I, I can remember the dunya. I'm not that old, by the way, but he's been acting for a long time, mashallah. This guy is in rehab for alcohol abuse, alcohol, alcohol addiction. Why? Look, look, look what he says. SubhanAllah, when I heard this, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe when I, when, I, when I was listening to the interview. They asked him, with all this success, all this fame, why did you do this to yourself? Why did you put your family through all these difficulties with your alcohol abuse? Well, a lot of them, you know what he said? He said, I was living in a living hell. Allah. Right then I heard it. And the doers of evil, they're in Jaheem, they're in a hell. A living hell in this life and hell in the hereafter. SubhanAllah. Allah made it very clear to us in the Quran. We don't read the Quran, we don't reflect. We're looking for happiness, right, left. How do we do it? How can we be happy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Verily through the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find assurance. Guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we felt it. All of us here, we felt that, that high, that sweetness of iman. The Prophet said, what did, he, what did he call it? He called it the halawa. You guys know halawa? Ah, mashallah, this guy, man, mashallah. You get to take care of this guy, mashallah. Sweet, he knows that, mashallah. Halawa, sweet. Everybody likes halawa, right? Everybody likes halawa. Prophet, he described, he said, the iman has a halawa, sweetness to it. This faith, this belief. And we've tasted that. We know how good it tastes. And Allah told us that the ones who turn away from his remembrance, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِشَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever turns away from our remembrance, that verily he will live a miserable life, a difficult life. And this is what we see in front of us. Returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll find this al-mata' al-hasin. That's four things. Four of the guarantees. I brought them to you now with the evidence from the Quran. First of all, we say what? We want you four things now. What are they? What do you get on the guarantee? Bravo, you guys are rough, man. I don't know what it is. Maybe I can get some tea in here, some chai dude or something like that. And get you guys pumped up or something, man. Maybe do some jumping down. I don't know. You got to get, get. 
Maybe it's because the floor is too cold or something. Uh, 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 your sins are forgiven. For sins are forgiven. Okay, Mumtaz. What else do we get? In the same ayah, we said the sins are forgiven and you enter into where? Jannah. Jannah. We said you'll be what? Successful. In this life. Successful in this life, inshallah, next. And you have the good provision in this life and the next, in the, inshallah ta'ala. That's four things. The fifth thing, and how about this, of all things? Through your tawbah, through your repentance, Allah will love you. Allah will love you. Imagine now, what do you, what do you become if you become somebody important in society? What do you, they call you, uh, sir? Huh? And the ladies, what do they call the ladies? Have a name for the ladies. What you? Huh? Dame, yeah. Sir and dame. So imagine if the queen called to you and she said, dame so-and-so. You or she honors you. How's that going to make you feel inside? Astaghfirullah, Sheikh, Astaghfirullah. You're going to be honored. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You're sir and so-and-so. You'll be showing, I'm sir so-and-so. Everywhere you, you go, I'm sir. Huh? You'll be, Allah will love you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He told us, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Verily, Allah loves the tawabin. The tawab is the one who is constantly repenting. I mean, he's constantly what? Falling into sin. He's constantly sinning. Constantly returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves these people. When you repent, Allah is going to love you. That's the fifth thing. We, say we have guarantees from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not from me. I'm just sharing them with you. If you want them, you take them. And the sixth thing we said is what? Have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. And he said he will become happy with you. Sixth thing. Think about that. Your boss at work, how much you strive to make him happy. Because you want to get something in return, right? You want to keep your job, you want to have some money, take care of your family. Allah, your creator will become happy with you if you make tawbah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the sunnah about the man who lost his camel. In the middle of the desert, all of his provisions are on it. His water, his food, everything he has. In the middle of the desert, he's looking around, can't find his camel, realizes he's going to die. Lays down under the tree, says, it's over. Just sit here and wait for my time. Two days, three days, four days until the throat becomes dry, can't, and he dies. As he's in this state, he looks up and he sees his camel in front of him. Think about if you were in that position, how happy you would be. The Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah becomes more happy with the tawbah of his servant than this man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes happy when you make tawbah. And the last thing, which all of us need to focus on this. All of your bad deeds, all of them, do some quick brainstorming. But all those bad deeds, all those years, all those shortcomings, all those sins, you can turn them all into good deeds. We said in the beginning, have them forgiven. Not just forgiven. Have them turned into good deeds. If they were to come to you today now, the local Mercedes dealers in Bradford, and say we have a special offer, 10 years of excellence in Islam Bradford, mashallah. You guys are here. We have, a, we have a deal for you guys. Anybody who wants a brand new Mercedes 2014, just bring your old clunker, your old beat up, hope the in, and we'll exchange it for you. That's it. Key for a key. Who wouldn't go? I was like, man, I like my car, man. I don't care. <laughs> I like my car. You'd be a fool not to go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, come to me, repent to me, and he gives you the promise, a guarantee that those bad deeds will turn into good deeds. There's a few conditions, no, no small print. It's clear, there's a few conditions in front. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمِنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلَ اللَّهُ سَيَّاتِ مْحَسَنَاتِ Allah Akbar. These three things, whoever makes tawbah, believes, and does good deeds, Allah will turn their bad deeds into good deeds. All of this through Tawbah. We have this great opportunity 
But unfortunately, we don't take advantage of it. The Prophet Sallallahu trained us as Muslims. He used to seek Allah's forgiveness how many times a day? 70 times. One narration. Another narration? 100. Huh? 100. Where did our man go, Bradley? Where do you go, man? He disappeared. I was, I was, I'm putting all the things in English and stuff like this so he can understand he, and he disappeared, mashallah. We had a guy, he's coming to learn about Islam. His name is Bradley, if you guys haven't met him. So I, I was, you know, I, I'm translating everything into English, you know, slowly so mashallah he could take it. He was here though, but he did. When he went, he went off, he'll come back, inshallah. 70 times, 100 times a day, he's, he's making istighfar alayhi salatu wasalam to train us of what we need to be doing as Muslims. Here, my dear brothers, whoever wants to make business, great business, with a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have all of these things we mentioned and much more, it's through Tawbah. I'm not going to take much more of your time, and I'm going to turn on the microphone, inshallah, to Sheikh Riyadh. But I want to advise you with a few things. The first thing is, obviously after advising you to make Tawbah, as the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to do, and benefiting from what you're going to get, is to not delay it. Don't delay the Tawbah. Because as Muslims we have a disease called, it's in a letter, an Arabic letter. Who knows Arabic? Who can speak Arabic here? No, she can't any Arabic? Okay, maybe it's beginner Arabic, so you might know it. In, in a letter, one letter is the disease of the Ummah. Seen and Sofa. Who knows what Seen and Sofa mean? Huh? You're going to do it. I'm going to. I'm going to make Tawbah. Sofa Atub. Sa'atub. Means that I'm going to do it in the future. Because as, as Muslims, we were, we were raised, have fun until you reach a certain age. And then you make Tawbah. Until you become a cha-cha. Huh? Huh? How, how, what's the age? Come on, you guys, you guys don't know. You guys know. It's, it's programmed in the Muslim's mind from a young age. You make Tawbah when you become how old? You start to pray, you start to be good. Huh? Get a few hairs on the face, white hairs. No, no, no. That's, that's, no, no. 40, man, come on. So when you become 40, then you start to be a better Muslim, start to go to the masjid, start to do this, start to start pay your zakat, start to do this type of thing, you know. And then when you get to 40, he said, no. And this is when you have the midlife crisis. And you go out and you buy a Harley. Because you don't want to let go of the day, of the days that pass. Uh, and then you say, oh, I'll do it when I'm 50. And then 60. And then. Don't put the toba off. If you can't make toba from all your sins, at least make toba from some of them. All of us make a start from today. Make a, guarantee, a, a commitment to ourselves that we're going to repent from today. From today, we're going to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have 10 sins... Look at the easiest one for you. Go home, make it nine, make it eight today. And then you have to make Tawbah from all of them. But no doubt if you make Tawbah from some of them, gradually it's better than not making Tawbah from any of them. And then I need to advise you to never give up. No matter how many sins you might have, no matter how bad it might be, don't despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you are a Muslim. And the Muslim never despairs from the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never says, how can Allah forgive me? A'udhu billah. What did Ya'qub tell his children? وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ And don't despair from the mercy of Allah. The only people who despair from the mercy of Allah are the kafirun. Not the Muslim. That's not, that's not our methodology. It's not how we believe. That's not how we work. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the ghafoor, he's the rahim. He's the Wudud, He's the Latif, He's Kareem, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's going to forgive us, inshallah, if we repent to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls you. And pay attention to the beauty of this verse. When you ever start to lose hope, remember this verse. When He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ أَلَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Subhan, This is one of the most beautiful verses in the Quran. Especially for sinners like us. Especially people with weak iman like us. When we read this verse, he says, O oh my servants, Allah calls us with this beautiful call. O oh my servants, the ones who what? Transgressed upon themselves by sinning, shortcomings, not listening to Allah's command, 
tur sinning, turning away. Do not despair from the mercy of Allah. Verily Allah forgives all of the sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about Ar the Arabic language. If you, can't, if you can't speak Arabic and you can't understand the Arabic of the Quran, you're missing so much of the beauty of the Quran. And Shaykh Riyadu will tell you that this verse, it can't be translated properly. Because this goes back to the Arabic grammar and the strength of the Arabic. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes with jami'an as a nakira, it puts more emphasis than anything, everything, all of the sins, anything Allah will forgive. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah puts emphasis on inna with it before that as well. And then he says, Innahu huwa al ghafur rahim. When, it, when the damir comes, inna hu and huwa comes twice, this is even to put more emphasis on it in the Arabic language. And it was, he, he, you can't translate that properly. But verily, he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the ghafur rahim. The all forgiving, the all merciful. So never give up, no matter how bad it might be. I, I, how many of you have killed somebody before? Anybody kill somebody? Brother, he's on his hand in the back, much Any of the sisters killed anybody before? We heard the microphone last time, huh? Alhamdulillah, none of you ever killed anybody before. Alhamdulillah. You guys know the story in Bukhari and others when the guy killed how many people? 99 people. 99 people. Think about that. Alhamdulillah. You can, when you think about yours, you say, Alhamdulillah, I never killed anybody. 99 people. Now, the guy obviously has some issues in anger management. But Alhamdulillah, he starts to realize. And this is what have, all of us need to benefit from this. That when the change comes, it's from in. You have to feel inside that, okay, you know, I, I need to make some change. I, I can't be like this. So, subhanAllah, he's, he wants to make tawbah. So, they tell him, go to this pious Muslim, mashallah. Abid who's worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not, not Abid, not this guy, huh? he's an Abid, he's a worshipper, huh? he said go to him and make Tawbah, and ask him how to make Tawbah, he doesn't have knowledge about Islam, he said you make Tawbah, no way, he said you're going straight to hell, guaranteed, pour the gas on you now, you're going to burn, burn, and so obviously we said the anger management thing is a little bit issue the guy has, Shh, takes out the sword, takes him out, makes him 100, but still inside he's, he feels it's not good, I have to make some changes, so he said, no, no, sorry, we took, we, we took you to the wrong, wrong guy. Said, Go to the scholar. The scholar immediately says, of course, what comes between you making Tawbah? But he gave him a piece of advice. He said, verily that you are in the land of evil people, so go with the pious people and worship with them. And alhamdulillah, you have to make the change. It has to start from within. You have to strive for it. And that's the next thing I want to advise you with before we end, inshallah, are two more things. And that is, if you're going to make change, you're going to make that step, you're going to be brave and you're going to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're going to strive to defeat the shaitan. That you have to strive for. It's not going to come easy. It's going to be difficult. This is Jannah. It's not going to be easy to get there. It's difficult. All kinds of traps and shaitans and landmines along the path. It's dangerous, dangerous, danger zone. But you have to strive for it. But you have a guarantee, once again, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love guarantees. Guarantees are, are awesome. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, guarantee. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلُنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَا الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who strive for us, verily we will guide them to our ways. And verily Allah will be with the doers of good. And once again the Arabic language, Allah came with inna and then the lamb to put double emphasis on it. That he will be with you. He will support you. He will help you when you're a doer of good and you strive for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing I'm going to remind you of, as we're making Toba, is the reality of death. The Prophet Sallallahu this is a prescription that he gave to his Ummah. He said, Ukthiru dhikr hadam al-adhat, ay al Constantly remember the destroyer of pleasures, a death. Constantly remember death. When you constantly reflect on the reality of death, How's it going to affect your deeds? You're constantly remembering the reality of death. As you're driving down the road, ta, 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 ta. listen to the music, huh? getting into it. Huh? Sh -sh -sh -sh. Mm -hmm. huh? And then you remember, 
How many people have been in car accidents? In the days we live in, boom, instant death. Heart attacks, athletes. Not like us with the guys with the one packs, huh? Talking about guys who are in shape. Heart attacks on the field, boom, he's dead. And you've seen some of the videos on YouTube. Once again, signs Allah sends to us. Be ready, be prepared. Anytime you can go, you have no guarantee. The people want to say, when I go, Rabbi Arjun, send me back. Let me just do a good deed. Let me give some sadaqah. In the other verse, I'll give some sadaqah and I'll be from the pious. And remember what the Prophet taught us in the Sunnah that everyone, everyone will meet Allah doing the deed that He died upon. All of us. That's when the Sahabi was doing, he was on um, in Hajj with the Prophet. He said to him, and when he, he died, he fell off his camel and his camel trampled him to death. It's tragic, right? Is it a tragic or not tragic? In general, we think it's tragic, but in reality, no. It's not tragic. You think, oh, that's tragic. But the reality, they want to come and clean him and put him in a coffin. Prophet said, he said, leave him alone. Leave him in that bloody ihram and put him in the ground. He's going to come yawm al-qiyamah saying, labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik in his bloody ihram on a hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's how he's going to meet Allah. And the one who's sinning and dies upon that sin, the one who's doing good deeds and that, I'm going to give you two stories and I'm going to end with these inshallah. There's some stories I share with some of the brothers on the tour and to reflect this reality from the days we live in. We bring it close to home. A friend of mine a good friend of mine who I, who I was working with and giving Dawah in the UAE for several years, he was on a trip to Oman. And they saw a horrible car accident. Car flipped over. And Alhamdulillah, brothers made a U-turn and went out to help out, out the, these brothers who got in the accident. As they got close to the car, they noticed a few things. First of all, the car was demolished. So they were like, is there going to be any survivors or not? It looked really bad. As they got a little bit closer, they hear something. What do they hear? The music, music pumping. The Kenwood speakers. You know how it is, right? No, we don't know Sheikh Astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah. So he's listening to this, listen to the music, Astaghfirullah. As they get closer, they see the blood that's filled up the windows. And they come and they find the driver of the car. Brother's telling me the story. He says he's seen it himself. This is what we call in, 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 in Ilm al Hadith, it's not Ali. Huh? It's not Ali. It's a high narration, high chain of narration. I took it straight from the brother who saw it. SubhanAllah, he said, I come to the driver. He's, 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 he's in, he can't move. Because the car's, all, all, he can't, he can't, he, he's trapped. But he's awake, he's conscious. But his boy next to him is un, he's unconscious. And the blood's squirting out. Hit a vein, hit an artery, hit something, so it's squirting, blood squirting. What is he doing? Un, knocked out. But he's dancing. He's still dancing. Because the music's still on. They say, at least, at least, turn off the music so he doesn't meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing this. If he dies in this state, this guy's going to meet Allah. Dancing. SubhanAllah. And the last story I'm going to remind you with is the story of another brother in Saudi Arabia, also in the time we live in. A brother who also was in a car accident, but he was a little bit different. He got a flat tire coming back from a village. He got a flat tire and he was changing the tire. And all of you have been to Saudi Arabia, you know that our brothers in Saudi Arabia have some driving issues when it comes to driving. So he gets hit by a car. Dragged on the road, thrown on the side of the road. And the guy runs away, hit and run, runs away. Some other brothers are coming down the road, they see the car, they see the brother on the side of the road. Oh, what's this? They stop, they see the guy's in bad shape. He's been hit, dragged on the ground, blood everywhere. He's, you know, he's having trouble. They pick him up, put him into their car, rush him to the hospital. Because you call an ambulance in Saudi Arabia, it might be there tomorrow. You know? So, subhanAllah, they pick him up and they hear this like humming noise. Like he's trying to say something or he's, he's talking or something. Like this. But they, like, they can't make out what he's saying. So, what, what, so like, they're trying to listen to him. And, and they, can't, they can't understand it. Then they start to, so they say, he's reading the Quran. 
He's reading the Quran. Allahu Akbar. In this situation, he's dying. He's clearly dying, the guy. The guy's in really bad shape, critical condition. But he's reading the Quran. Allahu Akbar. And it continues. You know, ayat, you know, they're making out some ayahs here, some words here. And then all of a sudden it stops. They turn around and the brother, subhanAllah, he's gone. They couldn't get him to the hospital on time. Both of the brothers who were in the car, they break down in tears. It's emotional. You see a brother in that state and he's reading the Quran. <coughs> they went to the hospital. Everybody heard the story, broke down in tears as well. And then they came to his mother. His mother came. And she said, what was he doing in that village? She said that he went every week to these small villages outside the city and used to give sadaqah. He used to give sadaqah to the poor people in these villages. And he wanted to do it himself. Get more ajah for it. He didn't go give it to this or that. He wanted to go do it himself. He would pass out the needs. Need some money. They have some, you know, some food, some clothes for the kids, whatever it might be. Helping out the poor people. All the time. This was his thing. So now he's coming back from doing what? Giving sadaqah and dies and will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reading the Quran. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to reflect on, on this reality. This dunya is our one opportunity. <coughs> reflect on the means. Why does Allah mention several times in the Quran about the people, the first thing they're going to want when they die is what? Send me back. Just let me do one good thing. And he mentions from the a'mal, from the sadaqah. Send me back. Let me do a good deed. Send me back. Let me give sadaqah. Reflect on these meanings. We start reflecting on the Quran, reviving it in our hearts. We're going to revive our souls, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm going to turn over the mic to my brother, Sheikh Riyadh. And Allah knows best. Allahu alam wa sallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh.